This is video number four of um, unit 2.1, the level of economic, the overall level of economic activity. Unit 2.1 of the IB syllabus. This is first unit in macroeconomics, and this is video number four in the series. In this video, I'm going to distinguish between um, the concept of GDP and GNI. We'll find out what this means in a minute. Uh, the difference between nominal measurements and real measurements of GDP and GNI, and the difference between total measurements and per capita measurements in measuring national income. Let's get started. In the previous video in the series, we defined GDP as the total monetary value of all final goods and services produced within an economy in a year. Notice I capitalized within, and this is where the distinction between GDP and GNP or GNI comes. GDP can be defined as the total of all economic activity in a country, regardless of who owns the productive assets. It is any economic activity within the country. It is based on location. If the economic activity is within the borders of the country, it is counted in the country's GDP, regardless if, say, that factory is owned by a Japanese businessman or, say, this car manufacturer is owned by a German uh, company. It doesn't matter. As long as the economic activity is within the borders of the country, it is calculated in GDP. GNP, on the other hand, focuses more on nationality. So G gross national product, which is GNP, also known as gross national income, GNI, is the total income that is earned by a country's factors of production, regardless of where the assets are located. So, GNP or GNI focuses more on the nationality of this economic activity. So, say for example, there are American factories and businesses all over the world. Because they are outside America, their um, output or their economic activity is not calculated in the United States GDP, but it will be calculated in the United States GNP because these are American businesses owned by American citizens. Similarly, if there were French businesses within the borders of the United States, um, these French businesses, their output will be calculated in the United States GDP but not in France's GDP. Why? Because they are located outside France. But they will be calculated in France's GNP uh, because it is French economic activity and they will be deducted from the United States GNP because this economic activity is not American. So remember, GDP focuses on location, the location of economic activity. If it is within the borders of the country, then it's calculated in the country's GDP. DP. GNP focuses on the nationality, on the citizenship and the nationality of this economic activity, regardless of where it is located. So how do we calculate GNP or GNI? So basically, GNI is equal to GDP plus all the income earned from assets that are owned abroad minus all the income paid to foreign assets operating domestically. So you add any income that you earn from your foreign assets or assets owned abroad and you subtract any income paid to foreigners who own assets within your country. Um, this uh, bracket, which is the income earned from assets abroad minus income paid, we call that net property income from abroad. So GNI is equal to GDP plus net property income from abroad. Now, when talking about measuring uh, national output or national income, we also have to distinguish between nominal values and real values. This is very useful when you compare GDP over time. Uh, calculations can sometimes overstate the value of GDP due to inflation. Inflation is a rise in the general price level across the economy. When prices rise generally across the economy, Remember, when we calculate GDP, we use current prices. So this might distort information and might give off the impression that GDP has risen when really all that happened is that prices have risen. 
So GDP measured at current prices, the prices we find nowadays, is called nominal GDP. When you measure GDP at constant prices and you adjust it for inflation, you have real GDP. So real GDP is actually nominal GDP adjusted for inflation. And this is to um, remove the effect of inflation in overstating GDP. This is very useful for comparing um, GDP over time. So say, for example, you want to compare the United States GDP in 2016 to 1916. In those 100 years, prices have risen a lot. So if you don't remove the effect of inflation, you will feel like the United States GDP has really, really, really grown in those 100 years. But once you adjust for inflation, you will get a more accurate measurement. So to convert nominal GDP to real GDP, we use something called a GDP price deflator. Okay? Uh, GDP price deflator is calculated by the following equation. Nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100. The deflator itself, you can calculate it by 100 plus the inflation rate over 100 times 100. So say, for example, the inflation rate is 3%. It would be 103 divided by 100 times 100. In that case, once you have the deflator, or if you know the inflation rate, real GDP would be equal to nominal GDP divided by the GDP deflator times 100. So, if you know the nominal GDP, which is what you calculate um, every year anyway, and you know the inflation rate, you can get the GDP deflator. And then the nominal GDP divided by the GDP deflator times 100 will give you the real GDP. Uh, this calculation is only for the high-level um, students, by the way. I'd just like to clarify that. The last thing we need to distinguish um, in this unit is the difference between total GDP and GDP per capita. So total GDP or total G&I measures the total economic activity of a country. While per capita GDP or G&I is taking that total and dividing it by the size of the population. So it measures the standard of living. It measures the GDP per member of the population. Uh, we call that per capita. It's per capita, not per capital. A very common mistake with a lot of economic students, they think that this is a typo and they write it per capital with an L at the end GDP. That is incorrect. It is per capita. GDP per capita or GNI per capita is more appropriate for comparing between countries in terms of standard of living. So remember, the difference between nominal and real um, GDP or GNI is it makes it easier to compare over time. The difference between total and per capita GDP or GNI, it makes it easier to compare between countries. Thank you very much. Have a good one.